representing the fine people of South Carolina. Congressman, great to see you. Thank you very much for Thank being you, here. Sir. So will the June jobs report and the downward revision of the May report, by the way, be the final nail in the coffin of Ob Obamanomics? Patrick Byrne is CEO of O.co. He is also known as Overstock.com. He gave President Obama more than a year's grace period before being critical. But now Patrick thinks the president pretty much owns this economy, warts and all. And I don't imagine, Patrick, you were that surprised. All these, all these brilliant Wall Street analysts were shocked because yesterday they said it was going to be a much better jobs report. Were you surprised? No, I think I've said repeatedly on Fox this recovery is fugazi. It's fake. It's a joke. Someday people are going to get the joke, but I've been trying to tell this to you folks for about 18 months. This, there was no recovery, and this is not a surprise. Nor is it a surprise that they're revising downward the last couple months. Yeah. They, they've been gaming. You know, it isn't just it isn't just the admission. It's the whole Washington bureaucracy. But they their economic reporting has a lot of slop in it, and you shouldn't trust it. You know, Main Street seems to get it. The guys like you who create real jobs seem to get it. Main Street everywhere seems to get it. Wall Street and the Beltway don't. Do you think this was the wake up call that will shake them up and make them realize what's going on? No, Wall Street, it, it, you're right, Main Street gets that central planning doesn't work. And when we're doing things like this NLRB thing with Boeing, it's central planning. It's, I used to live in China back when they were communist, and they tried to centrally plan where factories would go, and it didn't work for them either. It only, the only one they got market-oriented did it work. Uh, you know, the problem isn't that Wall Street and Washington, their thinking is bad. The problem is that Washington and Wall Street are in each other as the uh, Wall Street and Washington are like this. And the current thinking, the central planning, as bad as it is, benefits a bunch of Wall Street oligarchs. And that's why this thinking persists, not because it's actually uh, that, that's why Keynesian thinking persists, not because it's actually Well, better. you say Wall Street oligarchs. I would add to that all the union special interests that are friends of the president that he relies on to get reelected, or he's hoping to. Uh, and all of those special interests, they all get their carve-outs. They are protected. Main Street is not. Well, that comes with central planning. Starting in the 1930s, when more and more of economic outcomes got shifted to Washington, it made more and more sense for people to go to build lobbying organizations to go and lobby Washington to, to achieve your outcomes rather than compete to achieve your outcomes. So it really just all is part and parcel with a centrally planned economy, so, which is the direction we've gone. So when Austin Goolsby says the president wakes up every morning, the first thing he keeps in mind, the thing that keeps him going all day is how to create more jobs. He's really thinking about how to create more jobs for his friends. That's well said. Yeah, their, their system creates winners and losers. It may create many more losers than it creates winners, but the winners that they benefit are politically powerful, politically connected, and so they can bend the system in that direction. Do you think that the president cares more about the goals of, of helping build unions and income redistribution than he does about pure job growth? Well, I don't think he cares about either so far. And listen, I, I actually like the guy. I've told you before. I, know. I like the fellow. But he you gave cares him a much more. You gave about him a being, very long grace period, by the way. Go ahead. He hasn't he hasn't made the transition from being a politician to being a president, and he cares much more about reelected, being reelected than anything you've said. And that's what's really, I think, driving this behavior. By the way, one thing that may turn Wall Street off is he may lose Tim Geithner, uh, who a lot of folks in Wall Street are wedded to because of what he did with, with the New York Fed, et cetera. Uh, I understand you have some information about that or some thoughts about that. Well, no, I, I actually happen to know Tim Geithner. We were not well or anything. We knew each other in passing in college. He was a couple of years ahead of me at Dartmouth. Studied Chinese, knew, knew him, and he's actually a very nice guy, a very good guy, an intelligent guy. Doesn't uh, pay all his I taxes think, on time. Well, yeah, got to take the bad with the good. He's actually okay. a good guy. He's not coming from ego. Let me tell you, he, the first check is, first filter is, is he coming from ego? And he's not coming from ego. He's trying mm. to do a good job. But all these guys, to be honest, Rep Democrats and Republicans are coming from within the box. They're coming, they're in the box. They're, they're, they're wedded to a system of, really, it starts, I think, with fractional reserve banking. With that, you get lender of last resort. With that, you get a central bank. With that, you get apparatchiks trying to centrally plan the most important price in society. That is the price at which right. we discount the future to the present interest rates. So they're all in-the-box guys. 
Yeah. Well, Other I think, I think the Boeing case, and that's why I love Tim Scott on, because it's his district that Boeing is in in South Carolina. That, that typifies, for me, uh, the failure of, of industrial planning, if you will, of, of having Washington create business plans for folks like you. Quickly. It's a shocking act that what the LNRB is do, doing with Boeing is a shocking act yeah. to me. That's really kind of crossing a Rubicon. But when there, we're really at the stage now where we're trying to centrally plan where factories can go and, and Boeing can't decide that for themselves, that's, that's crossing a Rubicon. Patrick Byrne, Overstock.com founder, which is now called O.co. Thank you very much. Good to see you, Patrick. Appreciate it. Coming up on deck, the White House coming up with SNAP Solutions, their latest epic failure on jobs. If you guess more stimulus, you'd be right. And tax the rich, you'd be right as well.